So I am really pleased to give you, our closest friends, the first glimpse of the next generation of Math Pro. So the year is 2013, September to be specific, and uh, the Apple event takes place, the iPhone 5S is announced, and just at the end of the event, right when everybody thinks it's over, this guy, Phil Schiller, he walks out on stage and he's like, okay guys, so we have a revolutionary new Mac Pro design. The crowd goes wild. Everybody is like, oh my god, I wonder what it's going to be, you know? The Mac Pro at that point hadn't been redesigned for about 10 years since the 2003 Power Mac G5 came out. And uh, that's when they show off a beautifully created commercial showcasing what is a black cylinder as the new Mac Pro. The crowd goes wild. Everybody's looking at it, they're like, ooh, I wonder if I can put my GTX 660 in that bad boy. And that's when it's shown that the 2013 Mac Pro had become basically a MacBook when it came to its upgradability. And well, to say the least, that was the beginning of the end of the Mac Pro, even to this day. This is Apple's worst Mac Pro they've ever released in 2023. I bought something stupid again. This is, I think, the magnum opus of my idiotic purchases. This is the 2013 trash can Mac Pro. And I paid, uh, well, this is the cheapest one I could find on eBay for a whopping $200 flat after I haggled with the seller a bit. It has no RAM, no SSD, and today we're going to be getting some simple but functional parts in it and testing it out to see how it is. This is also the base model quad core with the D300 graphics, so we're not getting, you know, we're not getting like a hot rod just yet. I will be eventually upgrading the ever loving bejesus out of this computer, hopefully. We have either 8 or 12 cores. There's an 8 core CPU which apparently outperforms the 12 cores and everything except for barely multi-core or like barely some multi-threaded benchmarks. But single core is a lot better so I'm considering that over the 12 core Xeon counterpart. This guy, I got it in a whopping two days from FedEx. And uh, my family was astonished at the sheer lack of size of this computer. And honestly, I was too. Uh, at first, at least. Uh, we have a small piece of paper that has the... Or it's just a packing slip. And we have the Mac Pro wrapped in, I think, turtle choking amounts of bubble wrap, to say the least. Feels like a Coke dealer on, I feel like a Coke dealer on Christmas right now. Cause this is so much plastic that I think I could wrap a whole person in it. Uh, the Mac, the 2013 Mac Pro was like commonly her heralded as like a massive failure by, because it's well, probably the least upgradable Mac Pro until now with the 2023 M2 Ultra machine behemoth of a computer that has PCIe slots that don't even support graphics cards. So it's like, what am I going to do with the, all that PCIe bandwidth? And at least this guy has like removable graphics, it has a removable CPU, GPU, well, I just said that, uh, RAM, everything is removable. Point. Right. 
This isn't like my 2008 Mac Pro, um, of which is currently dead on the floor because of a bad disk drive swap, which resulted in me not being able to close the case, and honestly, I've just given up on him. This is a beautiful, megalithic behemoth of a computer. This is the 2013 Trash Can Mac Pro. And she is beautiful. This one is in really nice condition. I feel like I should be wearing the gloves. There's like one slight nick on the side, I think, and that's about it. Around back, you can see, looks like the warranty was voided. I don't know. And I think that just slides off. <laughs> that's so cool to me. Um, I don't know how to upgrade the memory, really. I don't know much about this computer. I kind of just bought it on a whim. So yeah, I have um, absolute buttload of DDR3 ECC memory that I'm going to be putting into this. I think my sources told me it has eight memory slots, so I'm going to be loading it up. I'm going to also borrow the SSD from my 2014 13-inch uh, MacBook Air. But yeah, we're going to get this guy kitted. Out. Yeah, there we go. You can see. I think it's only four slots. Oh, well, we'll get eight gigabytes of RAM running in this for the time being. I plan on just kidding it straight up to 128 uh, at some point in time. Obviously, not now. I want to kit this guy out with like a bunch of just bonkers stuff. We're talking. A ton of RAM, a ton of CPU, everything. I plan to love this thing. So yeah, we're gonna get some RAM and we're gonna steal the SSD from my 2014 MacBook Air and we'll be back. All right, so looking 10 years later at this Mac Pro, I picked one up on eBay for the absolute bare minimum cheapest, $200 for what was supposed to be basically a bone stock gutted out 2013 Mac Pro with a quad core Xeon. No RAM, no storage, nothing. It was in okay cosmetic condition. Looked fine, great. Cha-ching, take my money. I see the thing rolls up at my doorstep two days later, and well, I'll just let it go on from here, as uh, this is more a video about this Mac Pro, not a retrospective on Apple's disgusting failure. All right, so I had to put some like basic test stuff in here. We have 120 gig SSD, uh, courtesy of my trash picked MacBook Air. We have a quick like eight gigabytes of DDR3 ECC RAM, it's 10600 e It came in my surfer that I bought on Craigslist like a year ago. And um, we're just gonna boot it and hope that it actually works because I didn't check to make sure that any of these parts would work in here. Hey, this isn't an SSD. Uh, this is not a good SSD. We're gonna, get a, we're gonna make a Mac OS installer, I think. Because this is not my user account. I don't have access to this because... Fuck. <laughs> it works. Uh, fine, I guess. We're going to get a Mac... Or actually, I think I can just restart it. Or let me shut it down and restart it. And then use the online recovery or whatever to just reinstall macOS. Because I'm kind of too lazy to go through the absolute hell and back of making a USB when I don't even have a functional Intel Mac on me right now. This is my functional intact. Uh, this is my functional Intel Mac. My uh, iMac, my 2017 iMac that I would use is like my recovery system for this. I can't use for this because um, it's, you know, I'm this is where it's usually plugged in. I don't have a DATX, or I don't have an ATX power cable that I can just use for this, so. Web recovery should work, right? There it is. Like, I wouldn't be pissed if it's like, yeah, you have to install Mavericks. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I love Mavericks. It's like my favorite version of OS X. Okay! K. 
curious to see what version of Mac OS this boosts us into. Uh, I'm gonna clean up around here, I'm gonna get rid of all this bubble wrap, and then we'll be back, I guess. Okay! So we're back, uh, with what, what feels like days later, honestly. And, well, it's been about a day since I got this guy, because for a while I've just been working on trying to get Mac OS installed. You can see here we have Monterey, the uh, last supported version of Mac OS for this actual, uh, for this computer. And uh, you can see all 8 gigabytes of RAM were finally detected. It turned out the issue stopping Mac OS from installing for like two days almost was the fact that, well, I didn't properly put the RAM in this system, which, you know, was an issue because Monterey uh, doesn't work with only two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So I got the RAM reseeded 16 times and it works. You can see here though that we do have an upgraded CPU, which I th believe is the upgraded eight core option from the factory. So we did get a nice uh, spec bump over uh, what I paid for, which uh, definitely made me happy, I would say. And it has uh, dual D300 graphics. If we open system report here, we got a graphics slash displays. You can see, and here, let me. Uh, AMD Fire Pro D300s. They're both two gigabytes of GDDR5 uh, VRAM. And I don't really plan on upgrading these as I don't need that much VRAM. I edit 1080p video and I really don't need much more VRAM for, uh, well, not that much. You can see though, uh, it looks like the Slot 2 G uh, GPU is the one that has the monitor connected. <clears throat> and um, this guy does run everything fairly well. It has uh, one of the main features that I really enjoy having, at least on a Mac, is unlock with Apple Watch. Which this guy does fully support. You can see here if I lock it, wait for it to go to sleep here because why would I be able to be happy? Perfect. Tap, tap, wakey, wakey. Eric Hates BMC's Mac Pro, unlocked with Apple Watch. Which is nice, I'm glad uh, that works, and yeah. So I do want to quickly get into how this computer, I guess, specs up, or really compares to other computers that I've worked with, well, not necessarily worked with. So I have Cinebench R23 here on this guy, and then I'll also, well, actually, nah, I do not feel like downloading Cinebench on something else. But we'll get Cinebench running, and I'll quickly run a uh, multi-core test because that's going to be the fastest for this. You can see the E5 1680 V2 multi-core. And it takes about two minutes for one pass, it looks like, of the render test, you can see. I'm gonna stop it here, because I don't really want to spend ten minutes watching it just do several hundred passes through. But you can see, uh, looks like this time around on multi-core we got 6729, which is about above a Core i7 7700K, right below a Xeon, e uh, a Xeon X 5650 with 12 cores and 24 threads. Fun fact, that's actually the dual CPU solution that's in my personal uh, server that I host everything on. So you can see, it's right about where I'd expect it to be. You know, it's not like the most beefy CPU, obviously. I plan to upgrade it in the future, but it is good. I'm not gonna do single core because single core is really depressing to me. <laughs> in fact, we'll even give it a click real quick so we can just watch it go. 
Come on. Take your time. Yeah. It, it runs. Cinebench. I'm not very... I mean, I'm not... I mean, I'm kind of impressed. I don't know. I'm not, like, the most impressed with the results, but... I also do want to test a bit more of a real-world test, which is Minecraft 1.20.1. The latest version without any form of optimization. As well, I play Minecraft. I use computers. I like, you know, I, I, this is a very great time for me to test this. So, uh, obviously our target for VSync would only be 75 FPS, since this is not like a 165 Hertz monitor or whatever, you know. This is a computer I don't plan on using for any gaming, really. I don't really think I need a high refresh rate monitor. If anything, I want to buy one of the uh, Thunderbolt displays on eBay for like 200 bucks and replace this guy entirely with a more color accurate display that also uh, is, you know, meant for this kind of thing. So if we open the F3 menu here, at least earlier it was hitting far higher frame rates. I saw it peak at like 110. You can see if we like look more inland, I don't know. It's more like world loading, uh, kind of growing pains almost. We'll zoom in on the uh, frame right there. Or, you know, my camera can just be a really blurry mess. So you can see like 108, 109 frames per second on the Xeon and Singular Fire Pro D300. The 1680 and Fire Pro. So I guess with that, that kind of concludes this main test. I'm gonna get into. I, I plan on recording after I get like most of the editing done. Uh, I guess I'll talk more about how this actually like stacks up with Premiere and everything. Uh, you know, doing 1080p video editing, and I guess we'll be back. And hopefully, I have good news. Actually, uh, one last thing that I do want to get into on this guy before we go to the whole, like, uh, premiere test is I want to quickly get into, like, the boot speeds and everything on this. Because this is, like, a f the SSD in this is obviously not the one I plan to use. If we go into the About This Max uh, GUI, it's just a 120 gigabyte SSD. I don't plan to use it forever like this, but I am going to be using it for a while like this, right? And if I shut it down completely and then proceed to power it back on, which I need to turn on the startup chime so that this computer is actually worth something to me. Okay, I'm gonna put a timer on screen for reference. The power button was just pressed. There's the chime, actually. I didn't know it enables itself. Uh, this does have Verbose Boot because I installed it using OpenCore, anticipating Ventura, but I decided to just stick with where it was, you know, it's like home territory. I do love to see the Verbose Boot, though, so I'm not complaining. But yeah, it just, like, boots right up like that. Uh, unlock with Apple Watch doesn't work until after you've locked it. Now, if I could get my password incorrect, that would be very helpful uh, to show the typing test portion of the video. But it all just starts right up. It comes right up. Spotify loves to open directly after I start my computer or power my computer on. Day-to-day, -day, like, web browsing and stuff, you know, checking my email, obviously the really, like, mundane tasks that I have to complete every day, it feels like. Like, if I open Google Chrome... And like video watching is perfect. 4K playback works fine. I was watching YouTube while eating my like, dinner on this computer. <laughs> but you know, like I can open a bunch of Chrome tabs and be fine for the most part. Like let's open some YouTube. Maybe I'll open a uh, Skycrypt. And then search uh, the most sexy man on earth. Uh, and then we'll go to like eBay. And then maybe like Twitter. I don't actually have this logged into anything really. And then we'll go to Gmail. Gotta wait for that to load first so we can show everything. And then we'll go like uh, maybe a speed test actually. 
There's my home, there's there's my IP address. Please blur this out me. Sure you can see my location, buddy. Oh, well, no you can't. There we can see my just sexy Wi-Fi speeds. You know, it handles fine. And then we'll actually, you know, we'll even open up a sound trap tab and open up a studio to mix some audio to work on my mixing sessions. So you can see here, projects on Soundtrap just like load straight up, which is once again, another use case that I use a lot of my equipment for, which is producing and audio mixing. And well, those two things. Scrolling through the project is a bit rough and then playback just works fine. You can see here, my sister has a track recording yankee handle. Hold on, have a crash. It works fairly well. We're gonna turn the master volume back down because I really don't need any of that to change because I had to fine tune this for several hours. But once again, and then if we tab out of Chrome, the whole system still runs smooth. If I open up, uh, I think it's activity monitor. Yeah, activity monitor. There you go. Uh, let's go to memory. You can see Chrome's not using anything that much memory, but you know. Still. Um, it shows kind of like how well this actually can handle in like a real world situation where I have a bunch of Chrome tabs open. I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'm playing. Did I just hit the record? You can see, you know, we're playing audio. I'm browsing eBay for some new Thunderbolt stuffs. I'm on Skycrypt looking at my Skyblock stats. I'm maybe looking at YouTube or on Twitter. You know, normal things that people do. People do people things. And, um, well, even while it's doing this, and then I can open up Premiere in the background. I haven't even opened Premiere on this thing yet but we'll have Premiere open itself up, which might take a minute because it's Adobe software, it's not great. <laughs> really taking its sweet ass time. You see, it's, it's certainly loving that CPU there. Mm, all of the cores. All of them. Om nom nom. And I'm certain that the cooling situation in this is probably not holding up the greatest because this is like at least six year old thermal paste probably. Because I believe this specific Mac Pro is manufactured in 2017. I don't think the thermal paste has been touched in six years. I need to look up a guide and work on it further. But, you know. Ooh. I don't know. Did it click? Did it say oh, a click OK to exit? Uh, I'll figure that out later. But yeah, with that, that's kind of my whole experience, I guess, with the cheapest Mac Pro on eBay or the cheapest trash can Mac Pro on eBay. The cheapest worst Mac Pro on eBay. Tech, that, that, I think that's like, I bought the worst Mac Pro in 2023 or whatever it was that I end up titling. Whatever it is I titled this video. That is the cheapest worst whatever Mac Pro. <laughs> um, with that, I guess we'll get into more of the uh, information on editing after this. Whoa, dude, that video was crazy. Crazy. I was crazy once. I'm kidding. So, editing on this thing was really, really simple, really smooth. I had very little issues with it. I think, like, the worst part of it was at the beginning, having to create a media cache. But I figured that out really quickly on. Uh, and that's not a fault of the Mac Pro. The actual, like, timeline scrubbing has been really, like, buttery smooth, like, zero issue. Like... I can just random spot, playback is fine, go here, playback is fine. I haven't finished color, or I haven't done any color correcting yet, so obviously. Still some work that needs to be done. Or I haven't, I've not done color correcting, I haven't finished the background audio, I just thought I'd record this now. 
mainly because I plan on going to sleep soon, and or once I finish this video, and also the thumbnail. I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be. I think it's going to be... Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but yeah, premieres ran really nicely on this guy, and I'm actually really happy with how it's like worked out. I have not tried to export video yet, but even if exporting isn't the greatest, that's why I have a more powerful PC. Uh, so I can just toss it all on the external SSD that it all was on to begin with. Just toss the project file on there, tell it where everything went, and then I guess go, you know? Uh, although it's running really nicely uh, with Premiere. I'm really happy with how Premiere is running. What I'm not happy with is how my camera just constantly won't focus properly. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm kind of just throwing in the towel for the night. I'm tired, man. I finished editing a whole video. I need to get, like, double the background music if I don't just get lazy and just, like... I mean, like, I always have the option to just, like... Oh, it tried to paste down there. You get the joke. Whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> Anyways. Um... I'm losing it slowly. So yeah, with that, thank you all for watching this video. I was planning on doing a bit of a different outro, but I decided against it mainly because that would mean it was like a 30 minute long video. So with that, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in probably like a month. I want to do a one month in type video with whatever upgrades I've made along the way. Hopefully I'll have at least part of the RAM upgraded and the fucking SSD. I'm tired. <laughs> I've kind of given up with the whole like family friendly filter. I don't think YouTube's bots even check the end of the video. So, yeah, with that, thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you even made it this far, I certainly don't want to have. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.